So, welcome. Hello. Glad to have you back. I assume you come back because we've got no new people watching it because you've not shared it with your mates who are online coaches. Yeah. But then you wouldn't, would you? Because then they get an advantage as well. So, uh, I didn't think this through, do we? Never mind. Oh, well. Share it anyway with them. Good job we don't need uh, to go viral. Yeah. So, what's <laughs> yeah. the last video? Um, with Anna Mike, we're here to help you with your online fitness business. Mike's been drinking coffee late at night. I just realised he's not going to sleep tonight. Oh, it doesn't affect me. Does it not affect you? Nah, oh, of course it doesn't. I live with I can't. Caffeine. I'm really sensitive to it now. It's not late at night, though, is it? Six. What time does it? Late for me. What time do we start? Half four? Half four. It's probably yeah. drinking at half four. That's fine, isn't it? 6 p.m. Saturday evening content. You know, what's the half life on this again? Oh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Um, Just doing content on Saturday evening, guys, for you. Um, FA Cup Finals. FA Cup Finals on live now, and we're missing it. But, um, oh, yeah, but you definitely don't have time to do content the weekend. As so. it stands, it's 1 0 to. Uh, this will be interesting because when you watch this, FA Cup would have been weeks ago. It's 1 0 to Man City at the moment. There's no so. way United come back from that. Not so, in no, a million years. We're going to call it now. got the minerals. I'm going to call it... 4-0. Uh, are you going 4? Are you going walkover? Easy. I'm going to go... 3-0. Not much different, is it? Yeah, no. But that's, that, that sums it up there, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, anyway, we're going to talk about what makes you a shit coach right now. We're going to talk about why you're a shit coach and how Ooh. you can fix that. Um, bit controversial, but that's the hook, isn't it? That's what we call the hook. Um, but yeah, you are... In my opinion, if you're not doing this thing regularly enough, you are a shit coach. Um, and I mean that nicely. There's your hug. Um, I don't mean it from a point of view of like, you know, you don't know how to get someone in shape, et cetera, et cetera. But more so that you need to change your view of course to action, of bringing clients on, of all those things, the marketing side of stuff. You need to change your opinion of it, how you view it, um, if you want to actually be able to help people and actually coach people and actually show people that you are a good coach. Um, Coaches have this real big mental block about telling people that they have spaces. I don't know what it is. No, I don't know what it is because I used to be the same. I used to be the same um, because I used to think of it as it looks as if you're desperate or it looks as if that you need people through the door. Um, and why would you want to look like that? Well, well, guess what? Businesses need money to survive and you're a business. Uh, and Mike actually changed my mindset on this because he always does, doesn't he? Um, and it was you're doing a disservice to people by not telling them you've got spaces because if they don't sign up with you, they'll sign up with someone else who is shit, who does not have the best interest at heart and is just interested in money and they won't sign up with you and they'll get screwed over and they won't get the result they wanted and they'll have spent the money anyway. Something along those lines. I think I've, I made it sound better than that. He just sort of said Knowledge. basically you're a knob. So. He just basically said you're a knob. You're a shit no, I did say that. Um, uh. But yeah, it comes from this place of, I me and I remember that mental switch in my head was then like, shit, yeah, you're right. I have to be... I have to be selling my services. I have to be telling people that, that I'm available because otherwise I'm a shit coach in the sense of these people that I could have worked with would go to a shit coach. So therefore I am part of the problem. And that's what I'm trying to say here is you're part of the problem. If you're not telling people regularly how they can sign up with you, if you're regularly not putting any time and effort into your course to action and you're just chucking them up in your stories or you're just, oh, this post is all right. I'll just put the bottom of it, DM me for coaching. That's not a call to action. That's just bullshit. Stop doing it. It winds me up. Um, you need to do them properly. Uh, and you need to plan them properly. And for this very reason that you're a great coach. You are a great coach and you want to help people. But the only way that they're going to do that is if you tell them you have spaces for them. Yeah, I think there's... There's this like um It's like an ego pride thing, isn't it? Probably either ego pride, um not wanting to stand out, not wanting to hassle people or pester them. But then also there's this there's this kind of side of things with like businesses where they're like, you need to look more exclusive. Because you, you get some mentors who'll say you need an application form to work with me or you need to close your doors and things like that. Um yeah. Do you know what? That's all well and good if you've got people clambering to get a space yeah, with you. Yeah. So absolutely, you exclusive. absolutely. You know, if you are, um, I don't know, let's just go old school. If you're Lane Norton um, and he's taking on... Good coach. Good coach. Uh, yeah, good coach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're taking on 10 people, you would have to apply. It probably does literally have 10 people. It would be exclusive. It would be exclusive. And you Why? can charge it from... <laughs> Why? Because of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients he's coached, the years and years and years and years of skin in the game, the fact that he, he's... Got result after result. After result. Yeah, that, that's why. When you've got somebody with three half arse results where they're not presented properly, no real social proof, posting's a bit part, and you're trying to look exclusive, 
you can't look exclusive when there's no one wanting to buy from you. Like, you should be trying to get as many people to buy from you. It's not a tactic. You saying my doors are closed doesn't fool anybody. You say I've only got fi- just five spaces. What, every month? What, well, every month? Like, it loses its effect. And I think it's just this, this, this... Coaches would rather go down that way because it feels more comfortable. Because it's like, yeah, I will not advertise on spaces because it's more comfortable. And I will act more exclusive because it's more comfortable. Instead of just saying, we'll chuck a DM. So like this, for example, could be made into a reel. I don't know whether it will be. I don't know whether Joe will pick this bit out. But inevitably, you will be watching our reels on Instagram. If you're watching this, you probably watch our reels on Instagram. You'll see at the end of every single one of them, there's a call to action for one of our lead magnets or the members group. Every single one of them. And then in the caption, there's also a, a call to action in there as well. So not just in the video, but in the caption as well. And then we'll do further ones on our stories. And then we'll set them up properly and so on and so forth. So these are just tagged on the end. These are just things that keep running. And then on our stories, we'll talk about pain points, problem solving. We might show some social proof. And then we'll give the call to action. We'll show the actual relevance of using something. So Dan used an example the other day of, of mine about the excellent client and lead tracker. Um, BB Tracker uh, on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, if you're watching this. Um, excellent client and lead tracker where I might show my story. Coaches who aren't tracking their retention... Um, and they're not tracking their, their recurring and they're not tracking their success on uh, sales calls and missing a trick because if you don't know these three things you don't know where the bottlenecks are within your business you don't know whether it's retention lead generation or success on sales calls okay if you want our client lead tracker here, here's how to get it really simple you're starting to outline some things that coaches should be doing what might be the benefit of doing those so problem solving and then here's a call to action it's DM me this. DM me these words. Really simple. So, so simple. So simple. And like I said, I think coaches don't do it enough. They, they rely and focus on, like say, their content and they just hope that people are going to reach out and message. And the other part of the whole thing of like looking exclusive or trying to be exclusive as well is that if you are half decent and you do have quite decent results, people will assume you're full. They, if you're not telling people to sign up, they will go, oh, he's not, he's not put any adverts out recently, so I probably... Probably not. The amount of people that I have messaged me saying, oh, hi Dan, don't know if you're taking on clients at the moment or not, because I am notoriously shit at doing CTAs. Because at the moment I don't need, I'm full. I don't need clients. I don't want clients necessarily. Um, I always want clients, obviously that sounds bad, but I don't need them. Um, and, and, that, and that's why they kind of message me that way because they are in a point where they need the help and they don't want to wait for a CTA. But to get full, guess what? I did more CTAs. Shock horror. I told people how to sign up. I showed them the social proof. I showed them the, the people I'm working with and said, look, they were feeling this way before. They're now feeling like this. If you want, to, if you want the same thing, all you got to do is drop me a message. Constantly telling people how to reach out and what to do, what the process looks like. Even at the level when you're somewhat full, close to full, you would still do it. It's only when you're really full that you go, right, okay, I can't, I'm not going to do it as much. And I think that you have to remember that people, if you're showing social proof regularly and you're showing, the people will assume you're full you have to show people this is how you reach out to me and I think I can't remember it was this week I had a, last week I had a check in with, with someone and they said that and we used to do this talk about this regularly on the Monday calls we talk regularly about how many times you follow someone who does CTAs all the time and you don't unfollow them you don't block them you don't get pissed off you just Us. ignore them we, well yeah we do it you're watching it, you're watching this now which by definition means that you're not tired of us yet yeah, yeah we, better luck yeah we'll do them we, we still do them all the time and it's that whole thing of like you think because you're doing them all the time you think that everyone sees them so oh that was it it was someone who messaged me um, so we have our event which has been and done now probably by the time this video comes out which was great loved it oh he's brilliant um, <laughs> he messaged me and he said oh um, is there any tickets left for the, um, for the event uh, I, I missed the boat I didn't get a ticket and I replied I said well I said I've sent 10 emails about it and I know he's on the email list and we've talked about it on our story. There must have been six posts on the, our feed and about six posts on our stories talking yeah. about it. Because we announced was, all the speakers. This was a coach who was in a members group and isn't anymore. I messaged me and said, oh, I, I didn't get it. So he's seen, I'm assuming he's, he's seen most of the emails. Let's say he only saw five of them. But that just goes to show. You can do CTAs all the time for something. People still miss the boat. And this is my point is that you can't assume that A, everyone's seeing the CTAs. You can't assume they're pissed off or annoyed by them. And you have to assume that they haven't seen enough of them yet to sign up. You have to. 
It's the only way people are going to sign up and they are going to reach out and they are going to say, yeah, now's the right time. The coaches who do the most CTAs are the most full, usually, or they get to be the most full. They have the most clients, they have the most inquiries, they have the most leads. There's no, there's no escaping it. There's just no escaping it. It's what Com happens. So let's just use common sense then. So take, I'm talking to the audience here now. Audience. Oh, not me. I, I was thought you were going to make me use my common sense, which was going to be yeah, a, you have a problem. problem. Um, but let's just say common sense, and you go right. Mine and Dan's next goal is to get 300 members in the members group. So let's ask you a question. Do you think to get three up to 300 members from roughly 200 or just under 200? Do you think that we need to do more or less calls to actions? The answer, what you'll say, is more. Okay. So if you know that to be true, and you want 10 clients. Ask yourself the question, same question. That's it. That's literally it's as that, plain as simple. It's that straightforward. It, it literally is that straightforward. Like, and we and we can't say it plainer than that. Like with this sort of stuff. And it comes back to what you said before about coaches wanting, or on another video about want not wanting to be wrong. Mm. And I think with calls to action, there's this thing where they go, "Oh, I put out this one call to action, didn't get anyone reach out off the back of it." And then they say, "Oh, I did this call to action and had three people reach out, so I'll do more of this one." And what you have to remember is it's sometimes the accumulative effects. Like those yeah. people who reached out on that second CTA may have seen the first one and the first one actually really hit home with them and they were like, oh my God, this guy's for me. Do I, don't I, not sure. Mm, don't know about it. The second one comes along that's maybe not as good a CTA, but it's still a CTA. And they go, yeah, fuck it. You know, what? I will actually with this guy. You will never know which one of those CTAs made them think, right, actually, I, this is the kind of guy for me. This is the great thing. I, I think I really want this thing. I think I want it. You don't know at what point they realized I want to work with this person and then why it was that CTA that made them reach out. Because I've done it before. I've done CTAs in a week and I've done say two or three and I've got nothing off the back of the CTAs directly. But at the weekend, I have three people message me going, oh, hey Dan, I saw you post in a week. Um, I really need to get on this. So they knew how to reach out to me. They knew that I was taking on people because of the CTAs. Stop having this obsession with, oh, no one came in from that CTA. So fucking what? Yeah. What, so you're never gonna do another CTA ever again? Ridiculous. And it's this thing where they, again, it's that, min that minutia thing of focusing so much on the day and the week. Oh, I did this CTA, no one reached out, so it must be a shit CTA. Mm. No. No, they're, no, just the people that saw it at that point in time didn't reach out to you. Doesn't mean they didn't feel something from, from reading it. Doesn't mean that they don't think you're the right person for them. Doesn't mean they're not waiting for a payday. Doesn't mean they're not waiting for the, some money to come in from a dead relative or whatever, right? Bit morbid, but you don't know the reasons why someone signs up with you. You're just showing them how they can reach out and how to get in touch with you. It could be that they're waiting for an event in their life to happen and that's the trigger for them to sign up, but they know they want to sign up with you and they know that they need to reach out and message you. You need to remove the emotion from the post of the call to action. Oh, I'm writing my shit in that one. Or was it? Was it, was it shit though? Or was it that just at that point in time, the person that was dead on set on working with you didn't see it? Didn't see it? So if you've had any relatives recently die, uh, <laughs> you've got a little bit of <laughs> Yeah, come and join us. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Like, me, I think, so, again, it does go back to people thinking that there's right or wrong. I think people think that there's this set way of, of, of structuring like a call to action, which in a way that there is, you know, it's, it's pain points, problem solving, potentially some social proof in there, and then what to do. And that's it. But beyond that, there's not much difference. But I think people think that me and you have never, like, had a CTA that didn't go well. Like, so, Well, like we just said, we can't define it, though. There's, yeah, like, it's like... If if you're defining well as that nobody came in straight away, loads of them, yeah. Lo loads of them. Like the fact, the fact the majority of them, I would say, if you look over our lifetime, the majority of CTAs, like directly, like within what, let's say within twelve hours, I would say fifty percent of them probably didn't get anyone in. Crickets. Yeah. Like, there's been times we've had conversations where we've opened for for clients, and I remember conversations where it's like no one's come in, mm -hmm. we're panicking, no one's come in, no one's come in, but you become more numb to it the more that you've done it and you realize that actually no one needs to come in then. It's just the process. Don't focus on the result, focus on the process and just do the calls to actions as a way of reminding people that you're available and here's how to contact if you want it. It's just a little nudge. Mm -hmm. So instead of seeing the result as how many clients come in from that, just focus on the amount at which you do them, the frequency at which you do them um, how well you've done them, how well you've done the setup. Focus on that because the result over time will come in. 
like you've just said there, it doesn't need to be immediate. And it it was it was sod's law, honestly, where we would put out calls to actions and we would always we would always have this and we'd go, It's really strange. I've had like five sign ups this week, but I did a call to action and no one no one wanted it last week. But yet they're the same followers mm-hmm. that didn't reach out last week, but they're the same people that reached out next week. Yep. It doesn't need to be there and then. Always it's just happens. so yeah, so just make it a point, make it a priority of dropping in why your service is useful, unique, so on and so forth, why someone might want to start now, here's how to do it if you want to reach out. And you constantly do that. Forever. Even to the point where the members group, I'm, I remember working out the other day, I was like, oh, we did it. We did a couple of, we didn't think we did two emails and one post about it in that week. And we didn't get any, I think within about a five day period, we'd had maybe like one person join. I was like, that's a bit weird. I was like, I'd have thought maybe a couple more would have joined. And then it was just a random day on like the Monday after that. We hadn't talked about it for about five days. And I was like, oh shit, we've been really slack. We're not posting about it. We had three join in the same day. Uh, we didn't post about it. We didn't post a single thing about it. And it comes back to this thing of that you will never know the trigger as to why someone does something. So for example, I just bought a car yesterday. Just bought a car, right? Um, Congrats. Not a Bentley, unfortunately. Um, but the trigger for me buying a car, believe it or not, was that I moved golf clubs. This is going to sound ridiculous, but this is this is the point to this. I've moved to a better golf club in Dubai that is in a different area that would require me to drive to that. I currently get an electric scooter to my current um, golf club, which means that my wife, Laura, can take Isabel in the car to school. If I was to join to the golf club, I can't scoot there and I need to either get a taxi every single time or I need to buy a car and go there because she needs the car for, for the little one. And I just, I paid for that golf club membership a month ago. And I knew that by August, I need to get a car. So that trigger happened a month ago that I was like, right, I need a car. I've then been hit with adverts over the last month, as you can imagine. I've looked at other cars, looked at all these other things, right? And it doesn't really matter what has happened that made me buy this car. It was a referral from someone who knew someone who was selling cars and got on well with them and he had a good selection and I bought one and really good service. But that is kind of the, the secondary bit. The, the point I'm trying to make is the trigger was something unrelated to need, was unrelated to cars. I wasn't sat there going, oh, I really want to buy this fancy new car. The trigger was I moved golf clubs and that then I needed a car. And it's the same with this coaching is that you will not know someone's trigger for needing coaching or wanting coaching. But if you don't turn up and you don't do the CTS and you don't show them your personality, you don't show them all this stuff or the social proof, when that trigger happens, you will not be in their mind. Mm -hmm. And that's the key thing I think you need to take away from, from this video is that you have to keep turning up. So then I was having a discussion with, with, with the guys at golf. And I said, oh, I'm looking for a new car because I'm moving golf clubs. And one of the guys there was like, oh, my mate is really, really good. He's, he sold a few cars to a few of my mates. They, they said it was great, great service. Um, you, should, you should message him. Um, and this is a bit different because it's a product and not service, all that sort of shit. But you get my point is that I was hit with, inundated with adverts, inundated with adverts. I probably saw three adverts a day for a month and it took me a month to pull the trigger mm-hmm. and do something about it. That's how many adverts you might need to see to make a decision and, and what, what is best for you. And, and I just think that coaches don't understand that element of it. They are so selfish and so self-centered with this process in, in, a nice, in a nice way. I don't mean you're a horrible person in that they think that I've done something wrong. My CTA was shit. I'm not good enough. My, whatever it is. And, and yeah, as long as you look in certainly and think, you know, could you be better? Yeah, you could be. But there's such a human element to this that like you talk about this all the time, there's three things you need to someone to sign up with you, right? You, do you want to do it? I, I won't steal your thunder. You do it, the three things. You do it. But it's see like- See if you remembered it. See if I remember it, yeah. So they've got to like you, yep. right? Tick. They've got to know that you can get them a result. Yep. And then it's got to be the right time. Correct. Tick. You can't control that last one. Yep. You can only control the first two. And that was my point about the trigger. You will never know the trigger. For, and like I said, it could be they get an influx of money. They get a bonus at work. Could be that. That's, they bu- that, that they book a holiday. For. Someone invites them to a wedding. Yeah, could be that. They get proposed to. Could be any of those things. You have to be front and center in their mind that that's the person I'm going to work with. Yep. So now ask yourself the question, are you doing enough CTAs? Are you worried about your CTAs? Did your CTA flop if no one signed up as soon as you posted it within 12 hours? They're the things you need to be asking yourself. Do good businesses do adverts regardless? Yeah. Do those car companies still do those adverts even though I didn't buy a car from them? Yes. Yeah. I bet you they do. They don't, they're not sat there home going, oh God, that Danny didn't reach out. Oh my God, we hit him with all these ads. No. Yeah. But by laws of averages, they're going to get someone to sign up with them. Yeah. Buy a car from them, whatever. It's the same thing with this. Otherwise, they won't be doing Don't it. take it so fucking personally. Could, could be something, not something you're doing. Could not be something you're doing. Yeah. There you go. Let's, uh, let's finish with, we'll check the Man City Man United score. Oh, please. 
Uh, still 1-0. Yeah. 24. I mean, United ain't going to come back from that. So that's no. Anyway, hope you enjoyed there that. We go. Um, like, if you want anything from us, let us know. Call to action. Um, yeah, make sure that you send us a... If you want to get involved in the members group, all you've got to do is send us a direct message on Instagram saying BB members, all one word, BB members. Yeah. And um, that is my cup size at the moment with how much weight I'm putting on. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's all muscle. Most of it is. Mainly muscle. Most it? of it is anyway. Um, anyway, it's just oh, bone actually for me. We can actually say that. We can actually say this because this is, this is literally not going out until after the event. Ricky Gervais spoke at the event. Ricky well, Gervais, yeah, kind of. the event. David Brent did, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well. David Brent. Oh, you're odd. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I've said it in the address uh, yesterday. I bet he's buzzing. I'm buzzing. I bet he's buzzing. Yeah. You, you can't wait to. You know, we're like... Um, yeah. yeah. More anyway, than wise. More than wise when we get together. Have a good one. Catch you in a bit. Bye. 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 Bye.